Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another 2D hack and slash lesson. This is a pay what you want course. If you want to support the course, there are two links in the description. One to itch.io where you can just donate as you download the resources. And another to my PixArt course on Udemy. Let's get started. In this lesson, we're going to first we're going to address an issue that popped up in the last video that one of uh, my viewers mentioned, which is that you can kill the other knight from clear over kind of across very far away while facing the other direction, as long as you time it to try and kill him during his attack animation. And so let's talk about why this is happening. Uh, there's two main reasons why this is happening, and it basically has to deal with collision masks being the wrong in the wrong places. So the first collision masks that we need to solve are the attack one. If you look at its collision mask right here, we've got this giant box and that's no good. Uh, a lot of games will use boxes or, or circles uh, for their collision masks when it's like a fighting game for hitboxes and stuff. Um, but that's generally when you have a lot of them when they need to optimize those kinds of things. For this small 2D game, we don't need to optimize that. And so we're not going to because it would be a lot of extra work to optimize that and it would be for no reason. So we can change the collision type here to precise. And this will just give us the exact, um, basically, pixel collision uh, for, this, for this hitbox. And if we come into this one right here, uh, this one we don't really need to do anything because you can see the rectangle fits that collision box quite nicely, or that that hitbox. And then if we come into our our last one here, this giant rectangle is no good either. Uh, we'll be hitting stuff clear up here. It just won't look right to the player. So we're going to change this one to precise as well. But you can see GameMaker tells you that these are slower collision uh, checks because it just takes longer to uh, detect every single pixel in this collision. However, it's not it's not a noticeable thing in this game and won't affect the game, so it's okay. Now the last thing is that our knight, if you remember, with our skeleton we set up to use the skeleton collision mask. However, our enemy knight is still set up to just use the same as sprite for a collision mask. We'll look what the enemy knight's attack uh, sprite hitbox looks like if you come into the collision mask. Look how huge that is. That means we can hit just right here on this pixel and it'll still kill him. So we could change this and you could change it in all of the enemy's sprites, but once again we have a sprite, a knight mask that we can use instead. And so instead of changing the collision mask for all of the knight sprites, we're just going to set collision mask on our knight object to be this sprite, the knight s knight mask. And now that we've done that, our collision, our collisions are going to look a lot more accurate for when we're hitting this night. We shouldn't be able to hit it from clear and behind anymore. Okay. So that's a pretty easy fix. Let's close all of these windows. And the next thing that we need to do is start adding health. And we already set up a, a life form object right here. And both our skeleton and our knight are going to need health. Um, all life forms in the game in this case, we'll need health. So we're going to add an event, add a create event, and we'll add health in here. So we're going to start off with a base HP variable, and we'll set this to 25 by default. And then we'll say max HP equals HP, like this. So it turns out in the demo that I did, both the player and the knight have an HP of 25 starting out. Uh, and so we'll just leave it like this the way it is. Now our skeleton is going to inherit this information, uh, but we have to make it inherit it because um, 
A child will inherit a parent's event by default, but only if the parents or only if the child also doesn't have that event. So if our skeleton didn't have a create event, it would inherit the life form's create event by default and just run that code. However, our skeleton does have a create event. So this create event is overriding the parent's create event. So, but we want to run both of them. So how do we do that? Well, there's a function you can call called event inherited. And this will run the collision event. No, the create event, the create event of the parent. So it runs the creative event of the parent and then it runs our own create event. And we want to do this for both the skeleton and the knight. So in the night we can say event inherited like this. And then we can set up the logic for dying. So inside of our life form here, uh, both our skeleton and our knight have step events. Um, we could do a step event here and then inherit this, the, this step event, but we could also do an end step event. Um, so I'm just going to do an end step event. And an end step event is just like the step event, but it happens afterwards, basically. So there's the begin step, the step, and then the end step. And so they're very similar to each other. They each happen one frame or once per frame. However, they happen at slightly different times. And so we're going to take advantage of that and put our logic in here for dying. So if HP is less than or equal to zero, Oops, there we go. Instance destroy. So we'll just destroy ourselves. Now the last thing we need to do is make sure that our, our hitboxes are actually, well, there's two other things we need to do. We need to make sure that our hitboxes are actually damaging the health of the other object. So we'll say uh, other.hp minus equals damage. So then we, uh, deal damage to, instead of destroying the other object, we just deal damage to it now. And then we need to come into our skeleton's, uh, well, goodness gracious. Oh, that's the create event. I was like, why does our step event look so weird? Um, so we need to come into these attack states and set the damage. So we've got it set to one. We're gonna set it to five in attack one five and attack two. And these are just the values that I used in the game that you play on the itch.io page. And I'll do eight for attack three, or pretty similar to those values. And then our knight deals quite a bit more damage. Uh, so we'll come into the knight step event. And when it's attacking, it deals 10 damage. And then we can run the game. And now we should be able to deal damage. Uh, not sure why the knight just died all of a sudden. So we may have some issues here. Let's see. Let's come into our hitbox. So if creator equals no one or creator equals other, exit. other dot HP minus equals damage. How long do we have these around for? I assume their life is one frame. Alarm zero should make it one frame. But let's double check. Attack one. Okay, so our lifespan is four. So these are alive for these are alive for four frames. I'm pretty sure my other I'm look just looking at my reference project here, and I'm pretty sure that uh, this project also had a life a duration for them. 
So I must have stored which objects it had already damaged. I did. Okay. So what's happening here is this hitbox is up for four frames, right? And it deals five damage. And our enemy has 25 health. Uh, so this might actually be dealing damage more than four times. Let's check and see. Let's do our hitbox right here and uh, come into here. And then we'll just say print, or let's see, show debug message other.hp. So we're going to find out how many times we're dealing damage. And temporarily, we're going to come into our knight and prevent it from hit from switching to the attack state by commenting out this line of code. Just using two two uh, slashes there to comment out that line of code. So now our knight can no longer attack, only we can, so we can test this well. See, it just stands there now because it can't attack us anymore. Um, so then I can press this to deal damage. And you can see we did, we dealt um, five damage, which brought his health down to 20 then five more, then five more, then five more. Brought him all the way down to five health. Because, remember, our damage object is alive for four frames. It has a life of four frames. And we want that because, because um, our animation lasts four frames, um, or close to four frames. I, I, I kind of approximated that. But we want it to last longer than just a single frame. But we don't want it to damage the same object multiple times. So how do we solve this problem? Well, the solution that I came up with um, in the game jam, uh, which, you know, I, I've cleaned up this code a little bit, but it's still overall kind of its game jam code. But the solution that I came up with was creating a, a list of uh, a list of objects that had already been hit so that our damage object wouldn't hit them more than once. And I'm kind of thinking that that's not such a bad... That's not a bad way of doing this. Um, let me check. I'm, I'm going to check to see if... Uh, DS list find value. So we can use there's some there's some kind of nifty functions we can use if we use a, a DS list. Um, so I'm thinking we're gonna end this video here at this amount, and then in the next video I'm going to explain DS lists. So it's not all in the same lesson. It's kind of a lot to take in. So um, we got our health system working. And we got our hitbox system working with the health system, but we're hitting, we've got a problem. And the problem is we're hitting our, our hitboxes are hitting multiple frames instead of just one frame because it's processing the collision every single frame and it's alive for four frames. So it's hitting four times and we've got to fix that problem. So in the next lesson, we'll be solving that problem. So thank you guys so much for watching this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a like if you did and learned something. And I will talk to you guys later.